time to stop struggling with ChatGPT. In this video, I'm going to share the top seven prompt engineering tips to help skyrocket your business with ChatGPT. ChatGPT can easily help you save up to 10 plus hours per week and save you thousands of dollars per month when you know how to use it properly. But because it's still so new to a lot of people, most people don't know how to use it properly. It's not like there's a manual or anything out there that you can buy that teaches you how to use it. So with that being said, let's get right into the video. And as always, there's time stamps below because I know your time is valuable and I know what you're here for. All right, number one, give an example to ChatGPT. Let's say you're working on creating video scripts and there's a certain creator that you want to mimic or a certain framework that you want to follow. For example, Russell Brunson follows the hook story offer framework, right? So if I wanted to create video scripts following the hook story offer framework, I could tell ChatGPT, hey, create me a video script on a video about AI for business owners following Russell's hook story offer framework. And some people would just hit enter there. What you could do is go a step further is find a video that already follows that framework, right? That follow the hook story offer framework or any framework that you'd like to choose, copy it and paste it into your chat GPT prompt and tell chat GPT to use that as an example. So you could say, Hey, chat GPT, use the hook story offer framework. And it looks something like the example down below and then copy and paste that. When you do this, not only does it tell ChatGPT how you like um, want it to generate a response, but it also tells ChatGPT, it gives ChatGPT a reference to use, giving it, making it more precise, more exact to what exactly you're looking for. Sometimes when we ask ChatGPT for certain things, it may or may not be trained on them. For example, for Russell's Hook Story Offer Framework, Russell's a pretty big marketing guy. ChatGPT has information on him. I don't have to really feed ChatGPT more information. But as I said, it's not always perfect. So if I have a prompt that, you know, a video script that already follows that framework, copying and pasting that into ChatGPT will help it to give you more precise results based on what you're looking for. So give ChatGPT examples. Yes, you know, writing a good prompt is important and helpful. But if you also give ChatGPT an example to supplement it, it would make its responses so much better and be more uh, catered to what exactly you're looking for. Number two, give ChatGPT context when you're writing a prompt. So a lot of times we overestimate how much ChatGPT actually knows. Yes, it's trained on like over a trillion data points, but it's not trained on you as I always say. So you want to make sure you're giving ChatGPT ample context so that it can personalize its responses. Otherwise, it's just going to sound very robotic, very genetic, generic, very, you know, inhumane, I guess you could say, or not human-like. And when you give it context, you can do it one of three ways, right? Or there's probably more, but here are the main ways I use it, right? First, give context in your prompt. For example, let's say you wanted to write an email, right? Well, giving it context could look like, hey, I'm writing an email for my boss. I've been one of the top employees for the past five years. I'm going to be requesting more paid time off, et cetera, et cetera. The more information you give it about the task at hand, the better ChatGPT will be able to personalize its responses. The second way to give it context, right, is using ChatGPT's uh, custom ChatGPT feature, right? So you can customize ChatGPT. It used to be called custom instructions, but there's a specific setting in ChatGPT that allows you to give ChatGPT up to 1,500 character worth of information about you and how you like ChatGPT to generate your responses. And if you actually want to walk through on how to use that, I actually already made a video on it, so you can just click the video. I'm going to be tagging it in the description. Make sure to watch that after this one if you're interested in learning how to customize ChatGPT. And then the third thing that you can do to give ChatGPT context is to utilize the memory feature. ChatGPT can now remember what you said it to remember. So if you say, hey, ChatGPT, remember I'm a business owner and I help other business owners. It will now remember that. So whereas with custom instructions, you could tell ChatGPT about yourself, but it's, as I said, it's limited to 1,500 characters. With the memory feature, you can, as you use ChatGPT more and more, it will start to pick up more and more on your tendency, your habits, and start to learn more about you. And that way, as I said, when you start generating responses, it can be more personalized, sound a lot more like how you want it to sound instead of as instead of sounding like a generic random robot. All right, tip number three, don't use jargon when you're writing your prompts. A lot of times we have like industry specific acronyms and industry specific words that we use. And that when we're talking to other people in our industries, we can speak the language perfectly fluently and be on the same page. But with ChatGPT, you wanna to speak to it as if it's a baby sometimes. You wanna be as simple and as clear as possible. And I was in real estate and real estate agents and real estate investors have a bunch of acronyms, right? It's like they have their own like little language. One of them, which comes off the top of my head, for example, is PITI, P-I-T-I, -I, Principal Interest Taxes and Insurance for Mortgages, right? Calculation. And so if you're writing up an email, 
and you just want ChatGPT to talk about pity or writing something that has to do with mortgages, using that framework, that acronym, ChatGPT may not understand. Instead of using as a jargon, make sure you write as clearly as possible, as simply as possible, so that there's no misunderstanding, so that there's no miscommunication between you and ChatGPT. Tip number four, give ChatGPT a role. A lot of people don't know this, but when you're using ChatGPT, it can assume the role of different job positions. So for example, let's say you're looking for social media help. You can tell ChatGPT to act as a social media manager. Let's say you're looking for business help. You tell ChatGPT to act as a business consultant. And so depending on what you need it on, there's times where I've planned events, I'll tell ChatGPT to act as an event manager. I'll create a digital course and sometimes I'll have ChatGPT act as an online business coach to help me craft out in, um, the curriculum to how I want it. So there's a lot of different roles, as I said, you just have to be creative. So depending on what you need to use ChatGPT for, tell it to act as a role for that. As I said, easy one, act as a social media manager, act as an influencer, act as a marketer, act as a professional writer, act as a business coach, whatever it may be. And when you do that, ChatGPT will start giving you responses as if it's that position. All right, tip number five, tell ChatGPT to give you an example. So earlier I talked about giving ChatGPT an example, right? Now we're telling ChatGPT to give us an example. So what I'll do is at the end of my prompts, depending, and this could be no, no matter what I'm working on, at the end of the prompt, I'll type in the ChatGPT, do you understand, question mark? If so, please provide me an example. I do this for two, two main reasons. First, I wanna make sure ChatGPT understood properly what I typed in. Now, if you ever got into an argument via text, then you know how things could easily be misunderstood um, when you're texting or when you're writing. So I wanna make sure that ChatGPT understood properly what I actually wanted to do. Second, there's one thing in ChatGPT called hallucinations. And it's pretty much when ChatGPT goes haywire and starts generating a bunch of stuff that you didn't ask for. Now, this is impossible to, pre to prevent from what I know personally, um, but, you can limit the amount of time that it happens. So whenever I'm writing a prompt, I'm working on something new, I'll type in a chat GPT, do you understand? Or I'll type in my prompt and then I'll finish it off with, uh, do you understand? Question mark. If so, please provide me an example. Then let's say I'm writing back to the video script example. Let's say I want chat GPT to write video script following the hook story offer framework, right? And then it writes me a video script in its own random framework. If I were to just keep going, like I wouldn't have known if I didn't ask ChatGPT to provide me an example. And then I would have to spend mad time like tweaking and revising and editing everything that it comes up with. But this way, when ChatGPT generates its first response, I can edit and revise and tweak that to my liking. And then from there on, every other thing that it generates will follow the framework that I'm looking for or follow the way I wanted it to be done originally. Tip number six. So this is not essentially prompt engineering, but this is a cool tip that's gonna help you make your ChatGPT responses sound super personalized. People won't be able to tell the difference between whether an AI wrote it or a human wrote it. So whenever ChatGPT generates a response for you, let's say you tell ChatGPT to write a biography for you or write an email for you. There's a website called Quillbot, which is free to use, and you can copy and paste what ChatGPT generated, and then you can put it into Quillbot and have Quillbot rewrite it in a more human-like, a more natural language style of writing. And that way, when your whatever you wrote tries to pass through a some sort of like AI scanner to see how much was generated by AI, it won't be able to te detect whether it was or not. Mainly for those of you that if you're in school of any sort, <laughs> this is a cool trick to make ChatGPT sound super personalized, super, super human-like. People will not be able to tell the difference, right? So a lot of times when ChatGPT generates responses, it sounds a little too perfect, a little too crisp. So re putting what ChatGPT generates into Quillbot will make it sound as if you wrote it yourself and no one will be able to tell the difference. And tip number seven, Follow a prompt writing framework of some sort. Now, the one that I use is called the race method, right? Role, action, context, expectation. And I got it from one of these ChatGPT Instagram pages a while ago and just kind of, for the most part, perfected it. But that's not the only prompt writing framework. There's a whole bunch of them. As I said, the one I follow is called the race method. And I actually have a full YouTube video walking you through how to write perfect ChatGPT prompts in nine minutes going over this exact method that I use and that I teach and I've taught to hundreds and thousands of other business owners and real estate agents. That full video is already here on my channel. Make sure if you found value in this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. And if you want my free AI starter kit, which has my top 10 ChatGPT prompts, top five AI tools to help you save time, energy, and money, the link is going to be in the description for that. 
And if you're interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, need help with your marketing, need help implementing AI in your business, click the link down below and we'll hop on a Zoom call and see if it's a good fit for each other. But that's all for this video. Make sure to check out my video on how to write perfect prompts right here.